American history has thoroughly documented the triumphs of George Washington and his troops on Christmas morning, 1776, and their surprise attack on the Hessian garrison at Trenton the following day. But most historians fast forward through the next few days of Washington's campaign to the Battle of Princeton on January 3rd, 1777. What gets lost is a series of crucial engagements and decisions which continued the momentum of victory and bolstered the morale of Washington's men. Learning of the disastrous losses at Trenton, General Lord Charles Cornwallis raced toward Trenton with 10,000 seasoned British regulars as noon approached on January 2nd, 1777. The first of several explosive skirmishes began several miles outside of Trenton. Resistance was strong, and by nightfall, the Continental Army had been pushed back through Trenton and over the Assunpink Creek Bridge. The British troops attempted to rush the bridge several times, but were repulsed by the American artillery placed in line with the bridge's approach. The day's fighting would end with the two armies occupying opposite sides of the creek. As night fell, Washington called a council of war here at the home of Alexander Douglas. He explained to his generals that they had two options. They could stand and fight a British force that outnumbered them two to one, or they could recross the Delaware, regroup, and fight another day. Arguments ensued among all the generals, but they were finally able to decide on a silent march over current day Hamilton Avenue, which took them to Princeton. The plan called for the bulk of Washington's troops to escape Trenton in the silence of the night, leaving behind a few centuries to create enough noise for an army, thus enabling them to mount a surprise attack on the depleted force of British soldiers at Princeton. The success of the silent march and the diversion at Trenton made the victory at Princeton possible and transformed the fortunes of Washington's army.